It's Doodlebud here, and the pen that you're seeing right now, this was sent to me by Narwhal. This is their brand new model. It's called the Horizon. The color scheme on this one is called Twilight. It is quite shiny and sparkly. Let's check this thing out. For the packaging and unboxing, folks, this is what it looks like when it arrives. You pop it open. Jesus. And after a little bit of a struggle, you finally remove the cardboard sleeve. You got the box here, little magnetic clip pop off the top oh quick one i asked them to because i was con confused they did the the branding name change so it used to be the regular narwhal spelling and then you see this and you think is it navalure or is it still narwhal so i did confirm different spelling but you still pronounce it narwhal because i've heard both ways so there we go i had to clear that up it's got the details for you here so this is a piston filler tells you how to operate that has your uh, warranty information and all that good stuff as well then you got your box and there you go so i don't know never will know what to do with those and here you got your pen let's give you some quick dimensions of the pen like so about 153 millimeters when you uncap it the website says 137 i measured mine it's 135 you post it you got about 168 overall diameter of the cap here get about 15.2 millimeters the pen body here about 13 and a half and then the grip section i get about 11 millimeters on the section here you can see it uh, slips down nice nice little smooth transition and the section there that measuring it about 17 millimeters and you have the threads up the front so that's a new thing this is i haven't seen this on the narwhals before maybe they have some other models that do that but i've seen more and more pens now uh, having some threads at the front so that's sort of a neat design feature. I laid out a few pens for a size comparison. In the back there, we have a Mont Blanc 149, then the Narwhal Horizon, Twisby Eco, Lamy LX, and a Pilot Vanishing Point. I'm gonna get straight to writing with the pen since I already have it inked. And also I wanna clean this pen out because the ink I have is KWZ Sheen Machine 2. I thought it looks nice with the pen, but it's also really a, a messy ink and just stains you like crazy. So there's no way I can get through this review with clean hands. Right now, the nib option I have on here, this is a stub. The options that are offered, you will have a fine, medium, broad, double broad, and a stub. The ink's drying off now and you can start to see that sheen coming out of there as well. Super fun stuff, but it also makes for just kind of a mess. If you have any moisture in your hand, it smudges, it'll stick, get on your hand. So it's kind of a pain. So that's why I'm going to clean out the pen now. But it performs well in this pen. It, it lays down a very nice line, nice and wet, super smooth experience. Stubs are fun. You get some cool line variation going on. I thought that's a nice kind of fitting uh, nib to go with this pen because it's quite a quite a looker it makes the writing quite a looker as well but overall the writing experience is just spot on really 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 pleasant to work with uh, the paper I'm using is regalia paper the reason I chose that because it really does kind of show off ink properties like shading and sheen and all that stuff as well but yeah very pleasant writing experience what I'm going to do now is I'm going to empty clean out the pen it's a piston filler so i figured I might as well show you how to do that how they're how to empty it out clean it or or ink it up and then what i will do is uh, see the weight difference on how much ink this holds because i think this holds actually a fair amount of ink i was quite surprised i figured i might as well show some viewers out there just in case this is your first piston filler pen or you've never used one before you got the knob on the back you're just going to turn it counterclockwise and now the ink is going to come out of the pen uh, I, I normally do this in a sink i don't do this in some cups Great, we got that going on, and then we're just going to slide that out of the way. I'm not going to try to save the ink, because I will get more dirty trying to save the ink than uh, <laughs> just cleaning it out. Then now you screw the piston in, and so that drives the piston back up, sucks in some water, and then what you got to do is just repeat this process, and so now you're just going to empty it and get fresh water multiple times until you clear this out. I'm going to do this off camera now. Now you got the general idea. 
You can see it's already getting a little cleared up. We'll clean up this pen and then we'll see how much water it's holding. We'll tell us the ink capacity. So we're all tidied up now. You can see that nice clear ink window that's in there, but let's see how much ink this does hold. So when the pen's empty, we got 37.6 grams there. Let's uh, put some water and see how much it holds. It was 37.6. Now we got 39.4, so we got just about two milliliters of ink. Now there's a little bit of water left in here after I emptied it, but watch this. If you want to see what happens inside of a fountain pen and see the air ink exchange, I got a Kleenex here to uh, draw out some of the ink, and there we go. So that's the air ink exchange in action. The little bubble that's going to pop up to replace the volume of water that's exiting the pen it's kind of cool, you can see it on the ink window. And knowing me, anytime there's a chance to show a little science, I'm going to do that. So let's give an overall look at this pen. It is a resin main body here. The resin is done by Starry Knights. They're a company that does all sorts of these resins for pens. I think it really looks beautiful. We got all sorts of different colors we got going on. This even sort of a root beerish type color and some creams and all this kind of stuff. I'll do some glam shots here momentarily so you can see it, but it has just this beautiful sparkle that's in there. Really, really, really nice, like a pearl essence that's in there. On the cap band, it's a little tough with contrast here, but I believe it's, uh, it, it, well, it is PVD. It's a black PVD. It sort of has, I mean, it could be an illusion with the colors, but it's not like a super dark black, almost a bit of a brownish type uh, color to it as well. But you can see the Narwhal logo that's on here, and it has... This rise and fall to it, that's supposed to sort of mimic waves to go with the theme of the pen. Here we have a narwhal clip that's on here. It is a fairly stiff one, very functional, but it's a, a little bit stiff and smooth ends here on the top and the bottom. And then we have the piston knob and you have a, a trim piece here. We've got brass parts and there's no little flats on here to accommodate a wrench. You can see it's sort of a Mont Blanc style where you have little holes here so there'll be a custom tool to use to get onto there. For those folks that are wondering this is the wrench from a Mahjong I think it's the P136 the one that looks like the Mont Blanc 146 it's that same type of wrench it does not fit on here to be able to take that out and by the way I really would discourage anyone from taking it out you, you really don't need to I'll show you in a moment with the pen, I'll, I'll take out the, the nib unit and all that. You can access the piston if you really got to get some stubborn ink out of there or grease it. So uh, I would just leave well enough alone. There's really no reason to do that. One little thing I noticed, I am going to grease this when I do the pen here too. So you have the knob here in the back and you do have some brass threads and I got a bit of a shadow going on. But you can see a little bit of the dust coming off from there. It's, uh, it's not going to wear it out because it stops on here. So you're not going to rip out the threads, but... I think it's worthwhile when I grease up the pen here just to put a dab on there just to you know minimize any sort of wear on that there. I have a fairly large hand so I find myself when writing with the pen I just do it like so I don't post it. It does post, it does make the pen quite long and just due to some of the weight it does back weight it. The way I hold my pen it's not going to bother me but for folks that are a little more upright I could see that bothering you and yeah, so it's it's plenty big enough, but it does post if you need to. I find you do have to put it on just like a touch more to keep it secure, or else it does wiggle a little bit. Um, it's not going to scratch, so you can see down here there is spacing, so I don't uh, anticipate this scratching the body whatsoever. It catches here on the inside again, so we got like materials touching like, so I don't see any wear or tear or scratch, scratches coming from posting the pen. So for the most part, when it comes to inking and cleaning out the pen, you're just going to be putting the pen into the ink or water, whatever you're doing, and just driving that piston knob up and down. But if you do want to uh, clean it a little bit more thoroughly, you can just unscrew the whole nib and feed unit. Uh, I would encourage doing that first, so you can just grip it. If you need a gripper, you can put it on there, grab it top and bottom, a little bit of a wiggle, and then you just you know turn it off like so here, and out it comes. Now there is two O-rings, but while I was cleaning the pen here uh, in, during the review, the other one fell off. I'm gonna have to find it. It'll be on the floor somewhere, or maybe it did go down the sink, I don't know, but there, it does come with two O-rings. Be mindful of that. And then again, for whatever reason, if you really need to take the nib and uh, feed out of the housing, you just grab like so. You can give it a little bit of a wiggle if you need to. It's easier to do this when I'm not on camera. 
and just wiggle back and forth and then finally it will come free and there you got your nib and feed so yeah the nib looks quite nice uh again it's a little tough with contrast but there's that narwhal spike in the water there nice pattern on there a little bit of a filigree it's a black pvd coated nib as well really nice job on here and uh, it was nicely tuned when i got it when you go to replace it back into the housing being mindful you can see how there's a bit of a profile there it's notched so you line up your nib and feed line that up like so and then just press it all the way in now if you do find yourself really taking the pen apart and want to do a servicing it's nice you can get it like this again i wouldn't mess around with taking this whole piston unit out um, you can just get yourself a little bit of silicone grease whether it's this thicker stuff or you can get some that come in a little bottle and just a slight little dab i have a toothpick here i'll just send this up here try not to touch anywhere i got the piston further up in the uh, barrel just slide it around a few times right so it's along the walls and then you just drive the piston up and down to lubricate it and uh, smooth things out so if you find that it's maybe needs a little bit of servicing that's how i do that there as well and while i'm at it i'll put just a dab in these threads here and another thing just to extend the life of the two o-rings now only one i'm going to put just a tiny little dab there um because it's it's a fairly thin o-ring and that could uh get gummed up a little bit and potentially rip and i'll put just a touch there on those threads and then same thing just be careful don't get it on the the, the nib and the feet because that can clog things up slide it in and drive it home and there you go and whenever you do that be mindful because as you're turning things in you can see here the feed isn't quite centered so you can just adjust things a little bit and line up the slit there with the nib what I will do next, just because it's such a looker, I'll do some glam shots, then I'll wrap things up and just give you my overall closing thoughts on the pen. has performed well the writing experience as you can see lays down some nice ink that stubs looking good laying out some uh, some wetness as well to pull off that sheen so I'm very happy with that yeah ink capacity is good everything so I'm quite happy with it the pen retails if you go onto the narwhal website for uh, 168 us at the moment when I'm filming this video I think it's fair uh, these resins aren't cheap and to pull off a really nice one like this and the assembly I, I i think the pricing is in the ballpark of where it should be for a pen uh, like this with this types of looks and features and all these types of stuff as well so i think it's priced reasonably for what you're getting it performs well and yeah overall i gotta say if you like sparkly pens with gorgeous resins yeah most of the ones that are out there unless you go super high-end premium like into leonardo's uh, all the other ones are usually cartridge converter pens, so it's nice to have uh, these beautiful resins available in a piston pen. You typically don't see that unless you go really, really high premium and you're into like four or five hundred dollar range. So it's nice to have one in this price point. So thanks goes out to Narwhal once again for providing me their new Horizon pen for review. It's quite the looker if you've been seeing this online on some posts and uh, different retailer websites now you know hopefully this helps you in your decision making process one way or another i got plenty more stuff coming up some cool fun videos reviews as usual some engineering stuff until then we'll catch you next time